So we have diamond tetras, they're absolutely stunning. That shine on them. Yeah, you can see why they're called diamonds. Yeah, really. And the cardinal tetras, I've never seen such big specimens. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> this is your first ever high tech aquascape. Yeah, it is. It's my most ambitious tank. How long has it been running now? Three or four months. Month, three or four yeah, months, yeah, yeah. okay. Not thought about stem plants, like fast growing stems? I have been thought about it, but... Too much maintenance? Yeah, I, th I came to that conclusion, but... Why don't you like crepes? I don't know. I just never... I've never suited in the biotopes yet, so... <laughs> Do you like Sri Lankan one? I've, I've never really had much uh, Asian-style biotopes, so perhaps that's one of the reasons. But yeah. For this particular escape, I, I aimed for green plants, so that kind of sorted some crypts out. And, mm. um, yeah, but pro probably I should put in a couple of crypts in the back. You should do crypt only. <laughs> jump in, jump in and yeah, then they just fill it up. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people put off by crypts because they're worried about them melting mm. um, and worried about how to use them, you know, compositionally, because they don't know how they're going to look in the longer term mm. and things like yeah. that. So as with most things, it just, it's just worth trying it and then see, yeah. test and learn. But they're also kind of, aren't they a bit old school? Depends which... Quick, we've got some new species out there now these days. Yeah. What's wrong with old school anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, but, and I'm school. <laughs> you are school, you're a school teacher. Yeah. yeah. No aquariums in your school? Yeah, well, yeah I have one. I have oh, one. really? Yeah. I've oh, cool. Yeah. Well, in the biology department or? No, just in the, in the library apartment, actually. So, oh, um, cool, what size is that? I think it's just about, it's a jewel, 120 litres, I think. Oh, okay. Is that the Jewel Rio or Jewel? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, 125. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the Rio. Yeah, that was my first ever aquarium. Me too. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's really cool. I never knew that. Yeah. yeah. They are a good tank. They're a good solid beginner tank. Yeah, they are fine. They've got the filter, they've got the heater, lighting. The, the, the lighting's good enough to grow plants. Yeah. They're just a bit, they're, they're old school looking. You know. <laughs> yeah, and I, I would also recommend stripping the filter and the light if you want it to go for in a, in a longer run. But, uh, yeah. I, um, I retrofitted T8, it was back in the day, when I bought mine it was T8 fluorescent lighting. Yeah. And I added another two tubes to it. Yeah. Balanced it on the centre brace and just used the cables to keep it. My, my first things were, were also kind of TH. Yeah. But they, it was from Malawi, so there was no. Yeah, because used to be a really problem. big Malawi fan, didn't you? Yeah, I was. All of all Malawis. I gave some of mine away recently. Did you see the video? Yeah. yeah it's a beautiful scope, David. Classic. Thank you. Classic kind of V shape, nice little path through the centre. So we have diamond tetras, they're absolutely stunning. That shine on them. Yeah, you can see why they're called diamonds. Yeah, really. And the cardinal tetras, I've never seen such big specimens. <laughs> Honestly. Have you been feeding them testosterone? <laughs> they are kind of the result of intense feeding for uh, trying to get my scalars bigger. Uh, and uh, they, some of them looks like uh, they are yeah, they're probably not, not that healthy, actually, but... Um, bit, a bit, bit overweight. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have Emperor Tetras. Yeah. They're oh, lovely. And then some Corridoras, I've noticed. Yeah, I always have Corridoras if I can squeeze them in. They're so cute, aren't they? Really? Little puppies, if we're really? around. Yeah. Keep it running for. Uh, I hope I will have it running 
for a long time. Yeah. Oh. You talking years? Yeah, if I can. I am. I am kind of the restless type, but I managed to keep the same fish for my old tank, which I run was running for about a year and. Uh, Kept the same fish and just reshaped it. So I hope I can keep it for a long time. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if impact, high impact tanks will reach some kind of some peak. Yeah, and then they start to decline. Yeah. Well, if you choose crips, you can keep <laughs> that an issue. You can keep them going for years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my my four hundred's been running for in its current form for about three years now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But it's no, there's no fast growers really. I mean, I'm removing a lot of leaves every week, but mm. it's not like trimming stems, you know, because you remove a leaf yeah. and it doesn't have a big impact on the whole layout. Whereas when you trim a stem, it affects mm. like, when you trim a bunch of stems, it really yeah. affects the, the kind of aesthetic. So I think that's why I like um, crypts and swords and anubias and ferns, mm. you know, for long-term scaping yeah, because definitely. Once it's reached a certain level of maturity, it's, it's, it's actually quite easy to maintain the same mm. look, yeah. you know, very stable over yeah. a long period of time. Because it's also it's, kind of rewarding to have, yeah, you know, a big, slow growing. Exactly, it, it becomes it becomes part of you because yeah. you're putting your heart and soul and energy into it. Yeah, so probably I'll remove some of the most fast growing plants in in the long in the long run yeah. but it, it was also kind of a, uh, it was necessary to stable the tank in in the algae phase so i realized i had too many slow growers in that you're getting algae yeah yeah, yeah. what types of algae were you getting mostly the brown um, oh really dietums yeah yeah it lasted for very long actually so and what did you do to get rid of them? Just more fast plant, fast growing plants. Yeah, more fast growing plants. And then, what, then I was, I was using a product called Silicate Remover. Okay. Uh, and I think that helped a lot. Who was that from? Oh, um, Easy the, Life. Yeah, Easy Life. But I, I haven't got any kind of evidence for it. But I used it two times and. Both times I was using it, I, I lost a fish or two, so yeah. I think there was something... Um, something chemical that yeah, uh, something react very well. Yeah. I'm a bit reluctant to add chemicals to my tanks, yeah. apart from liquid fertiliser. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. Don't like to use liquid carbon or, mm. you know... Um, yeah, fish food and a simple liquid fertiliser is pretty yeah. much all I add into my tanks. Oh, dechlorinator. Do you use dechlorinate? No, we you don't need to. Any, yeah. You haven't got any chlorine. No. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Any more fish to add, or are you going to keep it as is for now? I think actually I have it as as I want. I added those Rosmani uh, rainbows. Mm, they're very small, aren't they, at the moment? Very, very small. So. Get much bigger. Yeah, they will. Do they jump? Or are they okay? They haven't jumped yet, but I I haven't got any jumpers since I put these. Guards on my corners. Okay, you just take them off for the video. Yeah, so um, that's kind of good. But mm. um, I think they will kind of finish the finish the job when they grow in. And uh, yeah, interesting to mix rainbow fish with tetras. Never thought about that because they're from Australia. Is that right? Yeah. Or yeah, it's not very biotype friendly, is oh, it? Not at all. I have. That's one of the advantages, though, isn't it? You can now with <laughs> that's exactly what you can have. Yeah. What you have fun, right? Yeah. You can have fun with the colours and the movement. And I've worn it Bosmanis for years, but I've never had a a, um, a bio from that region. So uh, mm. it's uh, Papua New Guinea, I think. So, that's right. Yeah. So it's it's something I would <laughs> never have squeezed in anywhere because they need so relatively much space, and I haven't got. Some and they, they actually get to really nice colours when they're mature as well, don't yeah. they? They, look, they take a little while. Yeah. That's why they don't sell so well as juveniles in the shops, because they yeah. just look a bit boring. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yes. You have to be patient. And yeah. 
I would always recommend if a shop wants to sell rainbow fish and have some mature ones on display. Yeah. And people can see what they're investing in, really. Probably if I'm going to find a couple of, of them in larger size, I'll put, put them in. I could, yeah. I could do that, but otherwise I think I'm done with the fish. It's beautiful. Let's talk about some of the, um, the actual tank itself, the lighting. Yes, yeah, the skylights, uh, high spot. Nice. And um, impressed. Yeah, I really like it. It's definitely my best light. Yeah, because you had Chihiros before. I had Chihiros, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I've, I've also had Twinstar and other other brands, but mm -hmm. I really like like this one. And Fully programmable. Yeah, and it can do different color schemes, and it's. Oh. Um, and in, in, in that way, especially on my, on my, uh, actually on all my tanks, because sometimes I switch style and next time perhaps I'm going to have uh, Tanganyika's running in this tank and then I don't want mm -hmm. the colors to be uh, just as, 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 as green yeah, and you want it more blue. Yeah. And it's, it's just perfect. You can, you yeah, can customize that. Yeah, yeah customize it. Um, filtration, I noticed you've got the Aquia. Yeah, it's Ultramax 2000. Quite powerful. Yeah, it's good. It's uh, yeah, some good fly from it. Yeah. In my CET? Yeah. From CET2R, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Are they, did you buy it or are they supporting you? Yeah, they're supporting me. That's good. Yeah, plants then, all Tropica aquarium plants, of course. Yeah, yeah. Tropica yeah. Uh, supporting you yeah. with plants these days. Yeah. You're welcome. Hardscape uh, is Elderly Stain from Wio. Yeah. Are you yeah. using any other Wio products? The, the roots are Wio as well. And, okay. um, what are the names of the roots? Black Moor, Black is something. Black oh, okay. Something roots. Okay. Yeah. So I've noticed you, right at the back, you've got some Holographula Pinata Feeder. Yeah. You know, you can use that as an epiphyte as well, if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Might be nice to add some a bit higher up in the water column. Mm. And then what it does, it um, it stays quite compact and it actually goes like a really red colour, although you don't want to go red. <laughs> but you can just wedge it in. Just wedge it in, like an epiphyte, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Goes really well as an epiphyte. Yeah. Um, and then you've got some Valisneria, I've noticed as well in there. Yeah, and I started actually them as just the balancing plants for the start of this. Ah, okay, yeah, to get some fast but, growth. Um, but actually, as, as my um, as some of my other plants died, I don't know if I'm going to keep them actually. So um, mm -hmm. I like that kind of wavy yeah, I do. effect. So. Well, so you've tried and fern, of course, um, yeah. lots of mosses. Is it the same bright species it's of moss? Same, yeah. yeah. What is it, Java? Or Bogle moss, they call it now. Yeah, I think it is. Philandra is Kedagang, uh, Needle Leaf, and Bukit Kalam. Bukit Kalam, yeah. yeah. It used to be called Wavy Green. Yeah. yeah. So that's mixed in. And then Petit. And Anubis Petit, Sagittaria, yeah. Bulbitis. Yeah. Lovely. And uh, you've got tropical soil at the back and then some yeah. sand at the front, obviously. Yeah. The moss attaches like that. Can you see the tiny little? Yeah. It looks, yeah, it's uh, best. looks very cool. Yeah. And it's actually just, I think something just falling down. Yeah. And, uh, and that, that's, that, that's when it's fully adapted mm -hmm. and then it, it, it will just grow really lovely across there now. Mm -hmm. Really like tight, tight against it. Mm -hmm. What you could do, if you wanted to, I know you, I'm just for my own, if, if you wanted some feed, mm. feedback, mm. you could trim the moss back actually quite hard. Yeah. And um, could promote kind of more compact growth because at the moment it's quite sort yeah, of bird, it's, bird's nesty, yeah, if you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's up to you. I mean, if you quite, some yeah. people like that kind of chaotic y, kind of more um, natural vibe, mm. you know. But if you wanted to promote sort of more growth like this, oh, definitely. You know, like it's, a, um, it's a bit. That's a good tip. Yeah. Because what happens is um, when you're preparing the moss, it's actually a really good idea just to put like, literally a single strand. Mm. You know, so you only need like a tiny yeah. bit, really. Um, 
it's tempting to obviously add more, and then it, but then it grows like this. And then what happens is the, the bits right in the middle, they're starved of light mm. and nutrients, and they can eventually rot away. Mm. And so it's a, quite a good idea to keep it trimmed back quite hard. Yeah, I haven't got much experience with, mm. with mosses, so mm. it was... Yeah. It's a high maintenance plant if you want it to look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why I very rarely use it because yeah. I don't like high maintenance plants generally. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you do, you know, and you you are honing your skills mm. as an aquascaper, mm. um, I would uh, yeah give give it a good trim back if I were you. Yeah, see how you get on. But um, it will float around, you know, and it can attach itself elsewhere, which is mm. quite cool in a big tank. Um, but what you can do is obviously as you siphon yeah. as so you as you're trimming so. Yeah. Um, you can actually use an airline, mm. you know, a, a very small diameter tube, yeah. attach it to some self-sprung scissors with a cable oh, yeah. tie, yeah. start your siphon, and then snip, 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 yeah, and then it sucks it away yeah. as you're snipping. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. If and when you do more aquascapes, you'll, mm. you'll find the kind of groups of plants that you really yeah. might love to use. Yeah. You know, you have like a, a go-to list. Mine's obviously Crips and Ubius, Ferns. <laughs> I, I just, I just love. I don't know. I love a newbie. I love a newbie's petite. I used to love yeah. the mini coin more. Yeah. I think it's because it was more of a novelty, mm. you know, because it's so small. But I just love the petite now. So. Yeah, I like the the needle leaf. Yeah, more than this. The Kedigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The needle leaf's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I planted some of that recently in my home workshop tank, and it all melted yeah. on me. Oh. Literally every bit. Wow. So I was really disappointed. Yeah. Because I said to Dave at Aquarium Gardens, because I've tried it before and it's melted. Yeah. And it, we, live, we live in the same area, as you know, and the water yeah. is the same. Yeah. And we use the same methodologies. Mm. And um, I said to him, have you ever had your needle leaf melt? And he's like, no, never. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll try it again then yeah. in the next, next couple of days. So melted, yeah. That's weird. It is weird, yeah. No, no ideas. No one's really... Come up with with the answer for melting, right? No, it's lots of theories, it's mostly to do with adaption, mm. you know, because they're grown in one environment and then you put them in another mm. and it stresses them and they just die. But they're supposed to be adaptable, you know, and yeah. uh, easy. So, yeah, who knows? They don't read the rule books, you know, the plants. <laughs> they can't sweet. read, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is the this is the fun though I think you know the the unpredictability of mm. some things it adds a little bit of excitement yeah. you know it's very peaceful it's very quiet that yeah. filter's really quiet yeah that's one of the things I like about it especially the yeah, it's almost silent mind. yeah, and, yeah. You, and, you, and it's such a quiet area where you live oh, I'm pleased that you've done a proper aquascape. I mean, you, your biotope's always beautifully aquascaped, but I think I'm pleased that you've given plants a good go. Yeah, I found the pleasure and I um, actually really like like this and um, maintaining it and watching it. And, yeah. Do you find the maintenance therapeutic? Yeah, the maintenance? yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which as long one? as I have the time for it. Yeah, it's, it's not nice to rush it, is it? Yeah, nothing worse than yeah. you need to... Uh, do a water change just before Probably. dinner or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got hoses everywhere. Yeah, yeah. My, my wife exactly. gets stressed. Does your wife yeah. get stressed? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit annoyed. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I can't. I, I, and I can't walk past my tanks without doing something. No. no. In them, and it absolutely infuriates Emma because yeah. we like take the dog for a walk or get him ready to go shopping. Yeah. And um, if and and she normally take. She's normally like you know. I don't want to generalise, but my, my wife, she likes to present herself well before she goes out, you know, mm. make herself look nice, perfume, blah, blah, blah. So while she's doing that, I'm like, oh, I've got a little bit of time <laughs> to, to mess around. And, and, but, but then I'll be like too deep into it. Yeah. You know, I've started doing a water change or yeah. something. Or you, you thing. just move, uh, move the stone or yeah. something, yeah. Yeah, and then, and then one thing leads to another, doesn't yeah. it? You can't just do one little no, thing. No, no, no. Yeah, it's a chain reaction. Yeah. yeah. No, I love the maintenance. I've, I've, I've said to people, if um, if you want to become a successful aquascaper, 
it's a really good idea to learn to love the maintenance. Yeah. Because that is the part of the process that, that, that helps to create the beauty, you know? Definitely. And if, you know, if, if you're, if you don't, if you're not motivated or you don't think you can be bothered to do the maintenance, then I'd, I'd suggest high tech aquascaping isn't the hobby for you. No. You know, you'd stick to low tech or. Yeah, I remember uh, in, in the beginning of my aquarium career, I was aiming, I was dreaming about those self sustainable systems where you're just going to pull a, a plug out and. Yeah. and it's just uh, doing water change bikes by itself or yeah. self uh, watering and, but I don't really I think you lose the connection yeah the other way it's just a static ornament yeah exactly and then um, it's I think I think the beauty of aquascaping is actually it's part of your create it's your creation in a way mm. you know you create you've created this mini universe for these fish and plants and bacteria algae uh, you know, all these life forms that are in your little glass box, you know, mm. and they're, they're not, they're not your possession, but they are, you are their caretaker, mm. you know, um, but they kind of are your possession, you've purchased them, but they belong to the world, they belong to the planet, right? they don't belong no. to you as an individual. No. But you... You can't really control it. No. You can influence it, can't you? Yeah. You can, you can keep keep the water well, you know, use good equipment, use good maintenance techniques, and then hopefully create an environment where the fish and the plants and everything else is thriving. Mm. And then that rewards you with something that's beautiful. I think that's the relationship, isn't it? It's yeah. like the more effort you put into it, uh, the more reward you get out. Yeah. And um, I think where people perhaps suffer is when they put a lot of energy and effort and maybe even financial investment into something like this and they have a perceived failure mm. and then um, it completely demotivates them and, you know <laughs> yeah. so you know my advice is don't don't be put off by failure use it as a learning mm. as, as a lesson and then learn from it improve and then hopefully you won't fail on the same thing next time but it does take uh, resilience Definitely. You know, you had a lot of brown algae and then, yeah. Yeah, you know, if a, be, if a beginner had that for, for weeks on end, it yeah. would have yeah. driven them crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and as you say, it's it's frustrating when you put in a lot of energy and work and you think you're on, on the right track and you think you've done everything mm. <laughs> after the book. Yeah. And then it's, it just starts acting weird. Yeah. But, um, yeah, then you just need to find out what, what to do. And what often time is a, yeah. it's a valuable source. Yeah, of course. How much time do you spend on this a week? I wouldn't say that much. I'm doing a water change and then I'm, yeah, as you say. A bit of trimming if needed. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Hour, two hours? Yeah, and that's in that... Um, Area, I think. Mm. Well, it's a stunning aquascape, mate. You should be really proud, especially for your first, you know, proper attempt at a plant in high tech plant yeah. tank. Yeah. Look forward to seeing it on the on the Tropico website at some point. Yeah, I do as well. Yeah, it's gonna be good. And hopefully, it'll be in Practical Fish Keeping magazine at some point. Maybe I don't know. We don't know yeah. who the new editor is, do we? No, we don't know. So uh, if the new editor is watching, <laughs> then, you know, yeah. what do you reckon about having this in the magazine? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go find my number. Or she. Or she. Or they. Yeah. They will find my number. Yeah. Okay, we'll call it a day then, mate. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate yeah, your time thank you. and uh, thanks for showing my me your beautiful aquascape. My pleasure. Oh, you do have a YouTube channel. Yeah. And Instagram. I'll leave yeah. links to those in the description. Thank you. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you've liked this, please do hit the like and subscribe. I'm really struggling to pump my ego up enough and I'm not getting enough subscribers. Yeah.